It's our birthday. <laughs> So this first year has been nuts. As of me filming this video, our channel has grown from 12 of my family members to 768 people who are excited about going confidently into law school. My first video that I filmed in my grandmother's bedroom last February when I was sick has garnered over 10,000 views, and six of my other videos have also passed the 1,000 view mark. You guys have collectively spent over two and a half thousand hours watching my content and I'm so grateful for your questions, your encouragement, and your trust in me to help you go through this journey. In celebration of our first year together, I have a gift for all of you, so make sure to stick around to the end. And if this is your first time, hello, I'm Nicole, nice to meet you. You get to benefit too. Just hit the subscribe button and join the party. In the meantime, you guys have really come through with some great questions, so let's get into answering those. First question is about cold calls, specifically what my first cold call experience was like, if I was nervous, and how I feel about them now. If you don't know, cold calling is a common tactic used by professors in law school to get class participation and make sure that you actually did your reading. It's a pretty traditional way of teaching law school classes, but is very much still a part of the law school experience, so you should be prepared to deal with it. Instead of a normal high school or college experience where a professor asks a question and waits for someone to raise their hand, in law school, professors call out a specific person and then ask that person the question without them volunteering an answer. It can be nerve wracking because you're often going to be on call for several questions in a row, maybe up to 20 or 30 minutes. Your job is basically to teach the class alongside the professor with what the cases that you read for that class said and how the lessons might apply to previous things that you've learned in the course. People who are specifically anxious about public speaking find cold calling pretty overwhelming and anxiety inducing. Thankfully, that's never really been an issue for me, so while sure there are definitely days where I'm nervous because I didn't understand the case well or didn't have time to read it thoroughly, ultimately public speaking has never been like a huge anxiety inducer for me, um, so I wasn't terribly nervous. Thankfully, for the most part, I also had professors last semester who kind of had a moderated approach of cold calling, where your chances instead of being the one person on any given day called out of a class of 90 classmates, you were told ahead of time if you were going to be on a specific panel of say nine to 10 students. So you knew which day we're going to be cold called on, meaning that you probably put a little extra effort into reading the night before and making sure you would take in really good notes. You also didn't have to feel as much pressure or nervousness wondering if you were going to be called on the days that you weren't on panel. I really liked that approach. I think it's a little bit more fair to students, but my understanding is that it is a newer technique and version of cold calling. And so this semester I pretty much have only professors who do the traditional cold call and you really have no idea when you're going to get picked on. Ultimately, cold calling doesn't matter that much. It can moderately affect your grade if a professor counts you as absent when you're unprepared and you're unprepared or actually absent in multiple days. But for the most part, I would definitely advise you to read with the final exam in mind and not just in case you get cold called. Here's a question about the LSAT. Do you have any tips for preparing for logic games or logical reasoning? Besides the power score bibles, what resources would you recommend? Well, this is a great question and one that I've answered in several videos. Basically, I would recommend trying to memorize as much as you can about logic games because once you have it memorized, you can apply the same diagrams and charts and techniques to any problem. As for logical reasoning, I didn't do a great job studying for that area. I kind of left it to the last minute and I wish I wouldn't have. My best advice if you're struggling to deal with logical reasoning is consider some form of LSAT coaching. Whether that's just using Khan Academy for free, signing up for in-person tutoring sessions with an LSAT coach, or signing up for a course similar to the one that I created with LSAT coach Steve Schwartz, which you can find on my website in the links below. I would encourage you to look beyond your own self and the text in front of you if that isn't a productive way for you to learn. The resources I just mentioned and a few others can be found on my website, which is linked in the description below. I really encourage you guys to check it out if you haven't been before. 
Speaking of resources on my website, I got another question that has to do with the service I offer. One of you asked, do you still offer help with personal statements and how does that work? If you go on my website, you can find a link to my Fiverr page where I offer help with personal statements anywhere from a single draft review to several revisions of a draft to the whole process of brainstorming to your final submission. I really would be careful not to underestimate the power of a well-written and thought out personal statement. I think it makes a huge difference in your application, especially when your scores are similar to or below the average of people applying to the same schools you are. If you have more questions about how my service on Fiverr works, you can definitely contact me there on Fiverr once you go through the link or directly through my website or Instagram. You guys know the drill by now. Next question. I'm graduating in the fall of 2020. When do I start applying for law schools? Well, I also graduated in the fall. I graduated from Wheaton College in December 2018, while the rest of my class graduated in May of 2019. The application cycle doesn't have to be any different for you than it is for the rest of your graduating class. So if you're graduating in the fall of 2020 and the rest of your class is graduating in the spring of 2021, and you're planning on going to law school in the fall of 2021, you're still going to apply in the fall of 2020. Regardless of when you graduate, whatever year prior to the one that you want to go to law school, you're going to apply in the fall. Technically, a lot of places will allow you to apply in the spring if you would like to. I think through March is pretty typical, but I would recommend applying as early as possible so you can get those offers coming in and be able to really compare and contrast what's going to be the best choice for you. Let's see, we got another LSAT question. If you get a low score on the LSAT, but take it again and get a high score, does this reflect poorly to law schools? No, not at all. In fact, that might actually be an advantage for you in going to law schools, especially if the reason that your score has improved so dramatically is because you learned what your weaknesses were, you applied yourself to studying in those areas, and it paid off on a better result your second time around. That demonstrates hard work ethic and personal self-awareness. It can look bad if you keep taking it over and over and over again, especially if there is no improvement, but in this scenario, go for it, don't be worried. Does the prestige of your undergrad matter? Would you be docked for going to a community college and a state school? I don't think so, especially if your grades, LSAT, personal statement, resume, etc., is all up there. I guess the prestige of your undergrad school could help if your grades are significantly higher than those of your classmates because those are stats that law schools have access to and you do too if you want to go find them. But I've never heard anything that would suggest that the lack of that particular benefit is harmful. Is it worth going to a highly ranked law school when I know I could be happy going somewhere lower ranked but closer to home? Well, like a lot of law students will tell you for a lot of questions about law school, it depends. Is the higher ranked law school going to better equip you for what you want to do? Is the lower ranked law school giving you a lot more money? Is living at home something that is going to reduce stress and anxiety or increase it? Those answers are different for everybody and it's a valid question to ask. Personally, I would just think about your own goals and what you know about yourself to be true. I have found living away from home to be a really cool experience. You can always go back if you want, but if you stay home, it can be difficult to break out of that market. Do you have any advice for reapplicants? I applied this year, but I'm not thrilled with my options. Well, um, you can always apply next year. There's nothing wrong with taking a gap year, and there's actually a lot of evidence that suggests that taking a gap year to get work experience or build your network can be pretty beneficial to your application. If you're not thrilled with your options, ask yourself why. Did you not get into the schools that you were hoping to? And if that's the case, what do they need to admit you this time? Did you not get enough financial offers? And if that's the case, can you negotiate with those schools and admissions teams to make that offer better next year? What can you add to your resume that's going to make you a better candidate for their class? And these are questions that you can be asking specific admissions teams. It's fine to take a year, just make sure that you do something productive that's going to bolster your application next year. When should I take the LSAT? 
Um, great question. It really, again, depends. Take the LSAT as early as you can when you're still prepared for it. I wouldn't advise you to take the LSAT, the time, the money, the stress, when you know you're not going to perform well or you haven't studied for it. I ended up taking the LSAT in June of 2018, so the summer before I applied for law school, because I knew that if I wasn't pleased with my score, I could retake it again that September. Since I've taken the LSAT, I believe that additional dates have been added. There's been actually a lot of changes since I've taken the LSAT, which I've done several videos on and I encourage you to check out. I will link some of them in a playlist that you can see on the end card. We're almost done, we've got two more questions, so I'll do the other LSAT related one first. Did you struggle with timing on the logical reasoning section? How did you improve your score in this section? Like I said earlier, I didn't improve my score significantly in this section. Thankfully, logical reasoning is already something that comes pretty naturally to me and I had a lot of practice in as a communication major in college. It is a difficult section with timing because a lot of the option choices aren't wrong. There's always that best answer though. Again, if the text of the Power Score Bibles or whatever other LSAT course prep thing that you're using isn't making sense to you, make the investment and check out the LSAT prep course that's on my website. It's very comprehensive with video lessons, Q and A's, practice problems. If this is a section that you're worried about in your self-study, I promise you're going to be set to go with that course in particular. Last question, what advice would you give non-traditional students wanting to apply to law school? I'm not sure exactly what this person was referring to when they said non-traditional. If that's someone who's non-American or is from a minority background or hasn't had anyone in their family go to law school before or somebody who is middle-aged and has had a whole different career. I've seen many people at my law school that fit all of these descriptions and I'm somebody who I guess in a sense is non-traditional in that I don't know any lawyers, my family never went to law school, um, I've done this whole thing by myself which is why I'm making this YouTube channel for all of you. So if that's the case for you too, you have somewhere to turn to. Don't be afraid when admissions teams reach out to you and ask if you have any questions. If you do, I made a whole video on questions that you can be asking. But my best advice for non-traditional students is to celebrate your difference. Hold it up as a unique perspective that that law school needs to hear and include in its student body. That's kind of the whole point of the personal and diversity statements. And if you need help with those, again, you know where to find me. As always, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And no, I didn't forget that I do have a gift for you all to celebrate our one year of life as a law student. To anyone and everyone who has subscribed to this channel and who signs up for at least one month of any level of my LSAT prep course, I am gifting a free personal statement draft review. If you don't know, the LSAT prep course comes in three different packages and they're all priced on a monthly basis. So you control how long you're enrolled and how much you ultimately pay. But to anyone who signs up for any level for any duration of time, all you have to do is send me a screenshot of your receipt, a screenshot that you subscribed, and let me know when you want to do your personal statement review. If you're not ready to do that until next fall, that's fine. I'll keep you on a list and that offer is never going to expire for you. Contact me through the form on my website or you can DM me on Instagram. I will be sure to respond to you guys as always with any questions that you may have about this particular offer, law school in general, or your law school applications. I'm so, so thankful for all of you. I can't wait to see what the next year has in store for life as a law student. Hopefully we can keep growing and learning together. Until next time, God bless.